Hi everyone. Good evening. I hope now we have clear understanding of how internet works, various aspects of network, flow of information in form of packets and implementations of different protocols. So right now you don't need to memorize everything. As we keep on spending more time with the tools and technologies, as you keep on using those tools, which help you access web page, help you uh, deploy your websites on, on the server, you'll naturally tend to understand the process behind it without much effort. So uh, I have listed all the topics uh, for you so that uh, we can have a look right now that what all we have covered in the last section. So right now, all these topics that we have covered, and I hope all of us are pretty much clear with these topics. Anyone feels anything that uh, from any of these topics, if any, any topic needs a little bit of more explanation, do let me know. I'll give you a very quick explanation. So what is network? We covered how internet network is set up, how we can use it as developers, different internet services, your World Wide Web, then search engines, ranking algorithms and everything. What is a browser, components, client server model, your uh, source of the source of information, destination of information. Then what is request response cycle, how a request look like, how a response looks like. Then how information travels across internet. Here we covered the packets uh, part that information is divided into packets. Then different protocols we started and the entire story. Anyone facing any doubts to, uh, in any of these topics, just give me a quick uh, uh, point in the chat. I'll, I'll quickly tell you just in one line what each topic means. So meanwhile, you can put it in the chat and later on at the end of video, uh, at the end of these uh, sec uh, sections, end of these sessions, I'll uh, take the doubts, okay? So don't worry, in case you do not understand anything right now, feel free to ask at any point of time. I, I would be more than happy to answer them. So let's start with a new topic. But before that, I've, I've just uh, created a small quiz for all of you. So it would be really good if all of you participate. I'll quickly share my screen. These are just seven, eight questions from all the topics that we covered in our previous section. So we'll quickly go through these questions and I'll share the answers with you as well. So. Uh, do uh, do write the answer in the chat if you if you know. So this is our first question. So internet differentiates one computer from another computer on basis of what should be the answer out of these options. Just take five ten seconds, write it in chat, and then I'll show you the answer. Okay. Uh, let's see wh what everyone is answering. So Harun has answered. Anyone else wants to answer? Perfect. So most of the answers that we are getting are option C, IP address. Let's check the answer. The answer is IP address. That's correct. So we now understand what IP address is. It differentiates two computers, right? Let's move on to next question. The next question is DNS stands for. What is the uh, full form of DNS? Let's see. Okay. Everyone is answering the right option that is domain name system. Let's check that. Perfect. Next question. Machines that place a request to access data is called, is it a server? Is it a requester? Is it a client? Is it a data accessor? So I'll just uh, show you the answer. The answer to this question is the client, the client machine. Uh, some uh, some of us have answered server. I would tell you the difference. We are talking about the request, the machine that places the request. Server is the one that sends a response. So that's the difference. Machine that places a request is client. So server is the machine that sends a response to that request. So do understand this difference, a little bit difference. Server sends response, client sends request. Okay, the next question. So in a computer network, 
we have to fill in the blank. Dash is the querying technique of the domain name systems to determine the IP address associated with the domain. So what is that process called? In the question, we're asking for the process. Is it called reverse DNS lookup? Is it called DNS lookup? Is it called forwarding DNS? Is it called address lookup? And uh, we are uh, moving from, I'll just tell you, we are moving like, uh, remember this, if this is the client and this is your DNS server, we are going from here, providing domain and getting IP address. What is this process called? This process of happening, what is it? So the answer is DNS lookup. I'll just show you the answer. It's DNS lookup. The process of getting an IP address from domain is called DNS lookup. A, a fun fact, your domain servers can get the domain name from IP address also. So here, the process is happening from domain to IP. Your domain servers are capable to get the domain name from IP also. And that process is called your reverse DNS lookup. So you always remember, what are we trying to access? Are we getting the IP address from domain? Then it is DNS lookup. If we are getting domain from the IP address, then it is reverse DNS lookup. Here, the process is domain is given. We, have, we are trying to determine the IP address. So the answer is DNS lookup. We are looking for a particular IP address. So I'll just clear my screen first. Okay. Let's move to the next question. The next question is, what is the repository of information linked together with hyperlinks all over the world? So repository is just like a bank, the bank of information where everything is linked to, to uh, through hyperlinks. Was it, what is it called? Okay. So most of us are answering HTTP, it's hypertext transfer protocol. Hypertext transfer protocol is the protocol through which the web browsers are able to communicate. We are talking about the repository. Where is entire information lying? In, where? Because the answer, the answer to this, just remember, what is the bank where all the web pages are there, which are linked through hyperlinks? That's right. The answer to this is your World Wide Web. It is the bank where all the information is linked together with hyperlinks. HTTP is the protocol through which web browsers communicate, through which client sends a particular request or server understands that request. So the answer is World Wide Web, the repository where all the information is lying and every information is linked through hyperlinks. And repository only means the collection, the bank. Okay, let's move to next question. So a computer that is used to store data or information for users on the internet is called. So some of us are answering as web server some of us are answering as web database so both of them can be answers but uh, the answer to this question uh, what i've written is web server because database is a part of web server uh, you remember that lecture where we saw what happens inside the server inside a server there are three basic components one is your uh, the web server part one is your database part and one is the back end part so the answer can be anything it can be sometimes web server it can be sometimes web database also. And database is re referring to database server. So both A and C are correct. So I'm happy that everyone is understanding that both can be the answers. So computer that used to store data or information for users on internet. So it is web server or database server. It can be anything. Perfect. Moving ahead. Response contains how many digit of status code? 
how many digits are there in the uh, in in the response for the, for the status code is it a two digit is it a three digit is it a four or five digit let's wait for a few more responses so the answer to this is a three digit code you remember the 200 code 300 code 400 code all those are status codes those are the status codes the code that is written whenever we access the network network request then then we can there we can find at the network response 200 code 300 400 404 so that is a three digit code so that is a three digit code yesterday we saw all those status codes http status codes so a three digit code so i can show you that code uh, uh, right now also allow me just one moment i'll open some website okay so it, it's visible right so if i right, uh, right click and uh, open the developer console i'll just refresh this these are the codes these are the response codes if i click over here you can see the status code is a it's a three digit code it's always a three digit code so if i refresh it again you can see always a three digit code it can be the 100 it can be from the series of 100s or two or three or four and five so five categories are there so a three digit status code let's move on to the last question the last question is which protocol generates a re request for missing packets of data. Remember, if some packet has not received the destination address, which protocol generates the re request? Okay, we are getting some answers, and that's absolutely correct. The transfer, the transmission control protocol is the one that generates a re request. That's perfect. So these were few questions just for a quick recap. We are not going through entire topics, just a quick recap to understand, to have a view. Okay, are we understanding what we studied so far? And from the way we are receiving responses, I believe that we have understood many concepts, if not all, many concepts which were really important. So let's uh, begin with the section two. Let's start with our second section, the new topic. Let me pull up the right screens for you. Okay. So today let's uh, start with the new section. This section deals with the development process. So this section is dealing with the development process. By development process, I mean covering all the steps that are involved to make a good application or good software before it reaches the final user. There are many steps involved and these steps are nicely categorized in various stages. Now question comes, the major question comes to my mind is why are we studying these stages? Why are we trying to understand these stages? What is the business as well as technical motive behind following these stages? So the major idea behind following these stages is to follow a structured process that enables the production of high quality, low cost software or application in the shortest possible production time. So just look at wh why we are starting. Why is it important? It's important to, so that we always follow a structured process. So that we always follow a structured process that provides us high quality, low cost software in shortest possible production time. So. It's very important to understand these stages in order to achieve everything. Now, before we, before we dive directly into these stages, there are some important prerequisites, some important basics we need to learn. Let's understand few basics. One of them is the software. We are trying to understand software development process, application development process, do we really know what software is? Let's understand what software is. Okay, so what is a software? 
So at present, there are plethora of high tech technologies along with softwares accessible to people. And these softwares outline a certain way we lead our lives. So computers and softwares are making profound changes to every aspect of human life, whether it's education, whether it's work, warfare, entertainment, medicine, law, everything, you name it, you have softwares ready for them. Softwares are not only makes your computer hardware perform important tasks, but it can also help your business work more efficiently. So right now there are business oriented softwares. The right software can even lead to a new ways of working. Therefore, before we go through each of these uh, definitions of software, it is a very crucial part of our lives. Let's understand software from different angles. I'll take each of these definitions from different angles and we'll see what a software means according to them. Number one, let's understand this. What is set of instructions programs used to operate computers? How do we elaborate this? So if I have to explain this, I would say software is a set of instructions or data or program which operates computer and execute a specific task. What's important over here is they perform a specific tasks. It tells your computer how to function. It tells your computer how to function. And without softwares, your computer would almost be useless. For example, take a web browser. Web browser is a software application that allows to access web. If you do not have web browser, you are, you, you, your connection with the web world cannot be established. Second, operating systems. You have Windows operating system, Mac operating system. Operating systems are software programs. They serve as an interface between other applications and hardware. Without operating systems, you cannot run your laptops or your PCs. So this is what set of programs and instruction means. They allow us and enable our computers to operate and perform a specific task. Now, we covered this design to perform a specific task, right? Moving ahead, specific tasks like if you want to run, uh, if you want to make calculations, you have soft software as a calculator. Calculating softwares are there. If you want to upload an image, there are softwares. If you want to edit a video, there are video editing softwares. So specific tasks, I mean by that. So what I mean by that is performing very narrowed uh, function. So let's uh, move ahead. What does it mean opposite to hardware? So softwares are opposite of hardwares. How? Hardwares describe the physical aspect of computer. Whereas softwares cannot be touched. They are not physical aspects. Hardwares are manufactured, softwares are developed. So software play a key role of mediator between the user and computer hardware. What is your computer hardware? So we can say it as a monitor, you can say it as keyboard, you can say it as mouse, something that you can touch, something from which you are providing the input, from which you're getting the output. For instance, you press enter and your video starts playing. So you're accessing through hardware, but the video is getting played on screen due to some software. If you do not have some uh, media player installed in your uh, device, you cannot play a video. So software works as an intermedi intermediate between a user and hardware. So this ne the next uh, definition says that software controls, integrates, and manages the hardware components of computer system. So what does it mean? So it, it simply means the instructions from software contain all the requirements that need to be fulfilled while performing a task. So soft, what the software does, it provides set of instructions to hardware to perform a specific task, to perform a specific task. We're just interlinking everything. So if we take some examples, you instruct uh, a particular printing software on your laptop, how to print, how many copies to make, whether those copies are to be colored or black and white, what should be the size of print and so much more. So you have many uh, uh, options to choose from within your printing software. Print software, if there's a printing software, you have many options from which you can take. Okay, this one I need, this one I don't need. 
and so on. And these conditions are provided to your printer, some printer out there, and accordingly the prints have been received. So software controls and manages the hardware. It provides the right input for a definite task. Now, what is multi-platform capability? Softwares have multi-platform capability. What does it mean? One software can perform across platforms. Suppose you have one particular software, it can, be perf it can uh, run on your Windows, Linux, Mac operating systems. It can run on your Android systems. So these kind of softwares are called multi-platform softwares, platform agnostic softwares, or platform independent softwares. So you can call them anything. Sometimes you would hear my software is a platform independent software. That means it can run on any platform. My software is a platform agnostic software. It means the same. So it is a, a computer software that is designed to work in several computing platforms. It can run on various operating systems or devices. So that's what multi-platform means. And now if we have to define software on global level, I would say today software is the world. Software is everywhere. It is an integral part of every sector, every industry, not just software uh, is a part of tech industry. So I would tell you half of all the coding jobs today, half of all the coding jobs are actually outside the tech industry. How are, code, how are coders hired outside the tech industry? That's because of softwares and applications being adopted by each sector. So if I give you an example, software is being deployed in energy sector that can provide you under, that can provide you data of underused energy uh, resources. In fitness industry, softwares are designed to monitor your body mass index, your heart rate. In simple health sector, if we see to check blood sugar levels, there are softwares. Payment processing softwares, they are all softwares outside the tech industry. Other industries have adopted the technology and built up their softwares. And these softwares are maintained by all of the developers like us. So now this is the global definition of a software that every sector has a software. And from a programmer's point of view, from a uh, computer programmer's point of view, if we say any program, any program or any code that runs on a computer is an example of software. Just understand this. Any program or any code that runs on a computer is an example of software or anything that you do with a computer requires the use of software. Suppose you do not have operating system installed on your laptop and you keep on pressing the power button of your laptop, nothing would show up. It would just be a black screen. If you keep on pressing enter and you do not have anything, uh, any software to catch that command, nothing would show up. So any program, any code that runs on computer is an example of software. Softwares are created by computer programs and commonly these are referred as coders. We, we call computer programs as coders. So this was very brief general overview what a software is from different points of view. Let's move ahead to the second most important part. The second most important part is understanding the characteristics of software. So why are we understanding the characteristics of a particular software? Because while developing a software product, the first thing that comes into a developer's mind is the characteristics. It is the qualities of software, what my software can do, what it is capable of. So the software should meet all the requirements of customer. We can call a software product suitable by looking at the features and qualities that it offers. So if we move to characteristics, various factors determine how a good software is built. So these factors are divided into three categories. So what are three categories which divide the characteristics of a good software? Number one, operational number two, transitional, and number three, revision. So these are three major categories. Sometimes this is also called maintenance category. Somewhere you can hear the third category as maintenance category. 
some call it as revision category some call it as maintenance category so let's let's understand these are each of the characteristics under this major categories let's understand them very briefly see the operational categories are uh, what are operational characteristics so the factors of this characteristics are related to exterior quality of software so this points to the major thing is ex exterior quality exterior quality of your software so let's understand one by one what does correctness means the correctness means that software should meet all the requirements of customer so if your software follows the correctness aspect of the operational operational characteristic so it would follow all the needs it would meet all the needs and requirements of customer second comes usability the software should be user friendly to anyone who can use it it should be user friendly it should not be very complex it should be very easy to understand so that anyone who desires to uh, get some uh, service out of that software he or she can use it very easily next integrity what does integrity mean integrity means that your software should not have any side effects so sometimes we do not understand integrity properly so if i have to explain it very simple way it should be like your software should not perform anything other than its expected functionality if you have designed a software for uh, let's say uh, calculations a simple software it should not do anything other than this that is integrity that is it should not pro if a software uh, is performing anything other than its uh, expected functionality that particular aspect is called as side effect so the software should not have any side effects it should be able to perform as per the expected functionality next efficiency the efficiency covers two major parts there are two major parts to efficiency what is uh, what those parts are number one space and time so your software should be efficient enough to use the sp storage space and time so regarding space the best is minimum space if a software takes that is best and minimum time minimum time to load minimum time to produce results and from other point of view if it is a storage uh, software maximum uh, output it can give maximum storage it can provide so space and time it should be efficient it should not take a very big chunk of your computer's memory it should take minimum space and minimum time to load minimum time to perform so that comes under efficiency so we can uh, clear this maximum part it doesn't mean much as of now so minimum space minimum time if your software is taking it is a part of good software that is efficient software what is reliability reliability is the your, the software should not fail at the time of testing it should not fail at the time of execution so reliability means when you are executing the product it should not fail it should not fail so that is what reliability means at the time of execution when you are providing that software to client when you are providing that software to the end user it should perform it should not fail security very simple to understand it should keep the data secure from any external threat no unauthorized person should be able to get information out of that software suppose you have some payment processing software the data should be secure you should follow certain parameters to make sure that data cannot be breached and last part under operational operation characteristics are safety from what uh, point of view we need safety we need software should be safe from harmful other softwares like viruses malwares spywares so if your software is immune to those spywares malwares if you have a right firewall right uh, framework adopted wherein your uh, your software can scan the threats prehand then your software is considered to follow the safety protocols or under operational characteristics so very briefly we have discussed this is the exterior quality how my software should perform 
what all it should do, what it should meet the needs, it should be usable, it should perform only expected functions, it should take minimum time and space, it should not fail at the time of execution, it should secure the data, and it should be safe from the other uh, malicious softwares. Next come transitional characteristics. The transitional characteristics play a significant role when software is moved from one platform to other. As the name suggests, it is moving from one platform to other. One platform to other. When software is moving from one platform to other, at that point of time, these characteristics must be fulfilled. So what is usability? So it is the ability of software to use the information transparently. What do I mean by information transparently? So usability under transitional characteristics is a characteristics of a product or system to work with other products or system. So like you have some information which is needed for other uh, platforms to understand. Those information should be available all the time. That should not be hidden. It should be available. So that is usability. If your information is available and it is uh, that that point is called transparent information so that other platforms can read the manuals, can read the guidelines and adopt the, uh, the software. For instance, uh, you've heard that Internet Explorer got uh, upgraded or your Windows operating system is getting up upgraded from XP to Windows 10 and Windows 11 and so on. Other uh, The upgradation happens between the software. Now the devices need, uh, need that manual, that information, so that all the required drivers are installed along with the software and the software can run without any issues. So that is called usability. Information available all the time to other platforms. So this, this refers to the ability of sharing data between components or machines, both via softwares and hardwares. So the next comes is your portability. What is portability? If your software can perform same operation on different environments and platforms, it shows portability. For instance, I have one software of making calculations. I'm taking very basic example. I moved from suppose Windows to an Apple software. This is just an Apple guys, so just uh, ignore my drawing. So uh, this is your Windows and this is your Mac. Let's write like this. So my calculator should perform same functions in Windows and should perform same functions in Mac. If my software is doing that, then it is a portable software. That is called portability. So performing same functions in different environments. Next comes transferability. So transferability is if, if you are uh, making slight modifications on the code, if you're making slight modifications on the software, if you're transferring something from one end to the other, we can use it. We can make sure that our with that right technologies, the upgraded technologies can be transferred to the old software. That enhances the reusability aspect as well. That we can use it for different purposes as the new technologies come up. So transferring new tech, new upgraded technologies into the old software. It helps the developer that the developer need not write the entire software again. It just needs to make sure wherein the right technology can be added and the software can be set as the upgraded software. So this is your transitional aspect. The last one comes your revision aspect. So revision aspect deals with the interior role. Just to understand this, this is dealing with the interior role. This was exterior quality outside. This is like correctness as per the client. Is it usable? It should perform the respected function and so on. Now comes the interior aspect. So what is maintainability? Maintainability means if I have created some software and suppose I leave that company and join some other company and a new developer comes as my replacement, then that developer should be able to maintain that software very easily. Should be able to make sure that where I left that software, the other developer is able to catch up. So that is called the maintainability. 
next comes your uh, testability so it should be easy to test that particular software so there are different types of tests like automated test unit testing so easy test codes should be able to make sure that your software is good or bad so while testing we usually make sure that 90% of tests uh, give us positive result then we then we say that particular software is a good software so if we have to write very easy test uh, cases for a particular software then it is called a testable software very easy software then comes flexibility so flexibility is very much uh, similar to your transferability the software should be flexible to the needs of current uh, technology in trend if you are able to incorporate new technology your software is called flexible extensible your software should be able to scale you should be able to uh, scale your software suppose you have a software to record data of 100 clients of 100 users your software should be able to record the data of 1000 users if the number of users increases on your web page so that is called extensibility having that ability to to be scaled same comes the scalability these are very much interrelated and uh, last comes your modularity. This is very important. What is modularity? Modularity is your software should be able to get divided into separate independent parts so that they can be modified and separated and, and tested separately. So suppose you have a software which have multiple operations. Let's say 50 operations your software can do. It can click a picture, it can record a video, it can record sound as well. It can generate some uh, uh, images, some uh, emojis and many multiple things can do. So now testing everything together is very difficult. As per the functionality, your software should be able to get divided into different parts so that each functionality can be tested separately that is called modularity. So if we are following all these characteristics, then it is called as a good software. So it comes under operational characteristics, transitional characteristics and revision characteristics. So operational points to exterior quality, transition points to moving to some other platforms and revision points to interior qualities. Is my software scalable? Am I able to add more functionality? Am I able to break my software into different packets? Am I able to test it with simple test cases? Will another developer able to maintain the software developed by me? So all these comes under your maintenance uh, characteristics or revisional characteristics. So these were the characteristics of a good software. Now we have been he uh, hearing software, software, software and hardware. So let's understand the difference between hardware and software, how they are connected, what makes them different by considering various parameters. So let's see what a particular software and hardware uh, lies on the platform as per a different uh, parameter. The first parameter I would cover is the definition. So what is a hardware? Hardware is a physical component of computer that stores and run on the software. So these are all hardware's your screen, your keyboards or some your uh, CPU cabinet. These are all hardware's your hard disk is a is a is a hardware. So these are physical components that run on computer and with the help of software. That's very important. What is software? software set of instructions or programs that tell a computer what to do. So like operating system tells a computer, okay, I'm the basic interface, which will connect other applications to some other applications. So Facebook tells a uh, hardware, okay, I will display all the content from a particular web page on the screen. So kind of like instructions that tell a computer what to do. The second parameter, so I'll write uh, parameters over here, like definition. Then the second parameter I'm covering is nature. What is the nature of hardware? Hardwares are tangible in nature. We can see, we can touch the hardware. That is what we called tangible. Software is intangible. We can see, but we cannot touch the software. We can see the software, we can download it, everything, but we cannot touch the software physically. 
Next comes the types. How many types of hardware we have? How many types of software we have? Hardware is divided into four categories, four major categories. Your input devices, output devices, processing, storage devices. So uh, we have seen these in our daily lives. Input device, like your keyboard, your mouse, output device, like your monitor. Monitor is providing you an output with a display. Your processing, your central processor unit, your CPU is a processing device. And storage devices, hard disks are your storage device. How many types of software we have? Software is uh, divided into two major categories, which is system software and application software. So we would be dealing these softwares in detail in further uh, uh, lectures. So what is system software? What is application software? We would be dealing them along the six stages as well. Next comes effect of computer virus. How does a virus affect my hardware and the software? My hardware does not get affected by computer viruses. My hardware is immune. Hardware is never gets affected by computer virus. Whereas softwares, they get affected by computer virus. Viruses are designed to affect the software. The nature of virus is to affect the software. Then what is the failure cause for my software and hardware? If I write a failure cause, what are different failure causes? A hardware can fail due to some uh, physical reasons like voltage fluctuations or cabling issues. Your hardware is not able to run. So that, those are very uh, generic reasons that we see in our daily lives. Okay. okay. So my hardware is immune to computer virus. My hardware does not get affected. And then... The, uh, we come over failure. We were discussing failure. Sorry. We were discussing failure, right? The hardware gets affected by voltage fluctuations, cabling issues, or some other technical, uh, the, or, or we say structural aspect. If your wiring is not proper, if uh, the voltage is not proper or setup issues, your setup is not proper. Whereas software can be affected due to virus attacks, bugs, spywares, malicious softwares, any fake website you visited due to which the virus uh, was uh, incorporated into your software. So these are the reasons of uh, software failure. Next comes durability. What does durability means? That durability means if my particular hardware gets outdated, then we need to replace the hardware uh, physically. We cannot replace it virtually. We cannot uh, upload a hardware. We cannot download a hardware. We have to physically replace the monitor. We have to physically replace the keyboard. Whereas softwares, outdated, outdated softwares can be updated virtually. They can be updated over internet. So outdated softwares can be updated, downloaded. We do not attach them physically. Then what about replacement? If damaged or corrupted hardware, we can replace the hardware with a new one and the new hardware needs to be installed. Suppose your screen gets broken in case of damaged hardware, you have to add a new hardware, a new hardware needs to be done. Whereas suppose your windows get corrupted, then you can, you can easily, easily, uh, reinstall your windows through the backup copies. Whenever your software is damaged or corrupted, we can install the software again using backup copy. So this was about uh, this was about uh, replacement. I would write it over here. Replacement. And uh, this was about getting damaged or durability. This was durability. So durability, if my software is outdated, I have to up, I have to update it physically. If I want to uh, update my laptop, I have to insert new parts. Whereas if my laptop gets damaged, the new parts needs to be installed. So durability and broken uh, or, or the replacement goes hand in hand. So now transferability. Hardware cannot be shared over internet. We cannot share hardware virtually. The hardware needs to be shared physically. We need to send one system through the uh, delivery system. We, we need to send one hardware through some delivery system to a destination address. 
whereas softwares can be transferred over network they can be uh, downloaded virtually so let's see very simple examples that we use uh, in our daily lives hardware can be a monitor keyboard mouse your central processor unit hard disk ram etc whereas your softwares are your ms word excel windows operating system photoshop uh, softwares google chrome so browser is a software so remember that so these are basic differences between hardware and software hardware basically some physical device software basically is some virtual uh, virtual uh, we can say a virtual tech available so it's a virtual technology hardware is some physical device so anything you touch physically anything you uh, you can feel it with your hand that is your hardware software you cannot touch you you can only see a software getting downloaded so that is something virtual so this was a brief uh, different and hardware now the next uh, prerequisite that i want to cover before going to uh, the stages in our later section that is what is an application what is an app we use an app in our daily lives every day we are using applications right on our mobile phones on our desktop so what is an app so the term software and applications are often used interchangeably by people who are not from computer science field so usually people say that okay my app is a software or software is an application they use it interchangeably so if we have to define it an app is a short for application it is a type of software that can be installed and run on computer tablet smartphone or other electronic devices technically apps are a form of software but not all softwares are an application so understand this difference apps are a form of software but not all software is an application we would be seeing this when we would be discussing different types of software so what do i mean by this is so if this is a software so let's say software has many components like this like this and out of these components one is your app so an app can be a software but software is not necessarily needed to be an app this could be something else this could be something else this could be a system software so that is not an application so we have different categories of software that we would be starting but what we need to understand over here is app is a form of software but not all softwares are an application so software is the bigger box in bigger box we have a smaller box that is called an app so let's move ahead an app most frequently refers to mobile applications or piece of software that is installed or used on computer most apps have a very specific and narrow function if you open your mobile phone you open an app you open that app with a very specific purpose if you are opening a camera you are opening it to click a picture very narrowed down and specific function you are not opening an app uh, you are not opening your camera to listen music for that you have separate app so app has a very specific function for example if we take a food delivery app that food delivery app is designed for users to get food from local restaurants and that food delivery app is not uh, not designed to buy groceries that is not designed to make some restaurant reservations so that food delivery app has a very specific purpose to get food from local restaurants currently there are million apps available in various categories like business productivity shopping and scheduling applications i've i've divided in two broad categories first category of application is applications which are used for desktop or laptop or computers these applications are called your desktop applications and the other category which is used for mobile devices that application is called mobile apps so let's see a few examples of both let's go through our desktop apps first so if we have to understand the desktop app i would say there are countless applications 
we, that we're using on desktop and they fall into several categories. Some are more full, fully featured. They have more features than others, which may do one or two things. So there are certain apps which can do multiple things like your clock, your calendar application on your, on your desktop that, that can do only one or two applications. And there are certain applications which are fully featured like uh, your Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. They have multiple features to perform, whereas your clock or calendar has a very specific uh, feature. So let's understand a few of the uh, desktop applications. Number one is word processor. A word processor allows you to write a letter, design a flyer, create many other type of documents. So whenever you, whenever you open a note editor, that is a word processor. Anything that allows you write a letter or anything that allows you write any type of document that is called a word processor. Most well-known word processor that we are using is Microsoft Word. So we have been using this. So Microsoft Word comes under word processor applications. There are many other applications also, but Microsoft Word is one of them. The next come is your web browser. So web browser, uh, a web browser is a tool that we have learned in the previous sections, right? It is used to access internet. So most computers come with a web browser pre-installed, but you can download a different uh, web browser as per your choice also. So examples of web browsers include Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Safari, and many more. So most of them come with a predefined uh, uh, web browser, like Windows come with the Edge, Mac operating system comes with Safari, and so on. And if you want to download any, any particular web browser, you can download it. They are open source, free of cost. You can download them. The next application that we are using on desktop apps are media players. So if you listen to some uh, music, if you watch to some, if you're watching some movies that you have downloaded, you are using a media player. There are many media players that we use. So in uh, Windows operating system, Windows media player comes by default. In Mac operating system, iTunes is very popular media player. So next comes media player. So this is the application that we're using on desktop to listen music, to watch videos. Now, uh, the, uh, the software that most of teenagers are using, most of the college students are using these days, that is gaming softwares, games. Many types of games you can play on computer. They can range from card games like Solitaire, to action games like Halo, many, many games are available. Many action games require a lot of computing power. Sometimes these games are very heavy. So they may not work on your computer unless you have the right configurations of your computer. For that, you need to have larger RAM. You need to have a larger graphics card. Your graphics card should be very good so that there is no latency, no lag. This comes under the gaming software. So we are playing games on desktops, on PCs using a software. So these are all desktop apps. The apps that we are running on our laptops or our uh, or, uh, PCs and anything. So these are very few of them. There are many I've just discussed to give you an idea what a desktop application is. Let's move on to the next part. That is your mobile application. So mobile application is very important because mostly we as developers are creating a mobile first websites, mobile first apps these days. Why? Because the amount of users, the number of users are very high on a mobile device than a desktop. So companies are moving to mobile first websites. Companies are moving to mobile first uh, applications so that they can cater the larger audience and earn more profits. So these days, every industry usually focuses to build first uh, an application or an, a web page that would run on mobile and then they would move on to the desktop versions. So let's discuss the mobile apps. There are three basic types of mobile apps if we categorize them by the technology used to code them. So I'm discussing mobile apps by the developer's point of view. So 
these mobile apps are the types of mobile apps categorized by the technology that we are using. So what are these three types of mobile apps? The first app is the native app. So I would discuss an, uh, a particular order. First one native, then a web app, and then a hybrid app. So let's understand what a native app is. The native apps are created for one specific platform. So these are platform specific. What does platform specific means? Platform specific means that if I've created my app for Android phones, it would run only on Android phones. It would not run on your iOS uh, systems. Same app can be native for two different platforms. For instance, I have a particular uh, calculator app. I have built it for your iOS platform separately. I have built it for Android platform. So I've built two different versions of same uh, particular uh, functionality so that they become native to each platform. So what does native means? If an app is a platform specific that it is an Android app, then it would run only on Android. It would not run on other operating system of, of your mobile device. So uh, because they're built for one platform, you cannot mix and match. You cannot say, okay, I'll use Blackberry, uh, Blackberry app on Android phone, or I'll use iOS app on my Windows phone. For instance, your social media apps like Instagram or mobile banking apps. So Instagram has a version for Android phone. Instagram has a version for iOS phone. Instagram has a version for Windows phone. So they build particular native apps. So why do they build it? Because that becomes very much functional to a particular operating system. They can enhance the speed. They can enhance the maintainability of an app. So that is what we call a native app particular mobile banking apps, they have different platform specific versions. So that is what native app is. Let's move on to the next part. That is your web app. You might think of a bigger, you can, you can think web app as a bigger advanced website like amazon.com. And technically they are actually websites. Web apps are not actually apps. They're actually websites. So what do I mean by that? So what's happening over here is web apps are designed to display web pages on your mobile devices. You do not actually install the app on your phone or device. Whenever you install such apps, these apps make their websites compatible to the resolutions of a particular device. And that device is your mobile phone. They run on the host server. They are actually running the website, but that website is turned into the right resolution, right resolution, so that it can be shown on a particular device. They are actually running, uh, I would uh, just write uh, right resolution, right? They are actually running on a server these websites are running on a server. They come to the device, they get adjusted, and they are they, they we feel as if we are looking at an app. What makes a web app different from native app? Your native apps can access the core, uh, the structural aspect of your device, like camera, like microphone, or uh, a loc a location is not the one. The, the technical parts of your phone, like uh, speakers. So the native apps can access this. The web apps cannot. The web apps cannot access a camera. They cannot access a mic because these, uh, these web apps do not need them. They do not require it. So they do not, uh, do not access and do not have the need to access the camera, microphone, speakers, and etc. So nowadays, web apps are, the, uh, are decreasing day by day. The web apps are decreasing because of this reason also, because 
multi faceted apps are being developed which require a camera which require a mic because of ai artificial intelligence if you have used google lens on your phone if you click any picture it can tell you on what web page that picture is if you click any uh, any uh, uh, random plant it can tell you the name of that plant so now those web apps require the use of camera so because of this the shift is happening towards hybrid apps what is an hybrid app hybrid apps are combination of both native and web apps but what's the difference it's a web app that is wrapped between a native app shell so you have suppose this is i'll just draw it over here this is my device and i have an application over here let's say this is uh, my uh, i'll say amazon app now i see an icon over here but inside a web app is running a web app is enclosed inside an icon that looks like a native application icon that is called an hybrid app why hybrid app is being used because it provides the aspects of a native app as well as a web app so due to this shell in encasing it provides the capabilities to access these um, these uh, what what can we say mobile phones different components these components of your phone of your device in for a web app a web app can access if a web app can access these components then it is called hybrid apps so if we go into um, deeper into hybrid apps these days progressive web apps are being developed pwas you might have heard it somewhere so progressive web apps are a, a enhanced version of hybrid apps wherein a web app can use the features of a native app as well so a hybrid app is essentially a web app but it is given a lightweight native app container that allows it to leverage certain native platform features and devices hardware example camera access calendar access you can pinch into zoom pinch out to zoom out you can take a screenshots with the uh, with the using uh, hardware's uh, the devices hardware and so much more all these things were not available to web application earlier but now if a web application can access the native apps platform features then that is called an hybrid app so the hybrid app becomes uh, we can say cross platform functionality these are cross platform what do we mean by cross platform it can run as a web app on different devices on the browser of your device as well as uh, by clicking an icon of the application so different platforms this provides them functionality to run on different operating systems different devices and so on so a very brief understanding of three types of mobile applications native that is platform specific remember why are we discussing this in detail because later on when we are equipped with all the front end part or back end part we would be building applications we would be building web pages there are uh, frameworks to build uh, mobile applications for instance if you will do react and if you if you want to move to mobile applications you need to understand react native there is a separate platform react native the separate framework or i can say the extension of react which provides the functionality to build native apps react native is a framework under react which can help you build mobile applications if you do not touch this you can build web applications you can build web pages but not native applications so today everyone is moving towards different technologies different types of applications we need to understand in which category we want to switch and what tools are required for that category so one of the tools is react native it is a part of react 
and if anyone go, uh, wants to go towards uh, application building they need to study react native and uh, we have to remember the points what points do we need to remember react nat oh sorry the native apps is platform specific web apps are not platform specific native apps can access the devices hardware like camera microphone speaker the web apps cannot access the devices hardware web apps are actually websites which are being rendered on the uh, screen of your phone and they get adjusted as per the resolution and what is an hybrid app hybrid app is actually a web app that is enclosed inside a native app container and it provides the functionality to access components hardware so that is an hybrid app hybrid app can access both the qualities of a web server of a web application as well as the native application so let's take a brief look at how these are structured so now when it comes to building your mobile app you have three options we've already started native web or hybrid now what comes under the native app it's a simple this is your platform specific platform specific what is a web app this is actually a browser this is actually an app running on your browser and this is the app's web code remember this is the app web code you're not downloading it from anywhere you're just opening it from browser and what is an hybrid app hybrid app is the native container an application container within which the web app is running so it provides the functionality of native app as well as the web app and the technologies used to build these applications are your html css javascript and further frameworks of javascript for these applications there are particular native frameworks like i discussed react native if you study react native you can build a native application as the name says so quick examples and uh, one point definition for these is like what is native app a particularly electronic platform or communication device specific platform specific remember very important web app these are actual web pages that display on desktop and mobile devices hybrid apps a web app given a lightweight native app container what are the examples of your native app like angry birds a simple gaming application instagram spotify now these have been moving earlier they they are native apps for this but they have been moving towards the hybrid apps because of the increased number of users because of the increased number of technology advancements for native apps if the technology gets advanced the uh, a developer has to implement it for every platform for every platform developer has to rewrite those technologies and implement those technologies within the existing code whereas a web app the web app is not platform specific hybrid apps are not platform specific so it can be incorporated at one place and then it can be implemented automatically at every other platform at every other place so your uber app amazon app were earlier web apps but now they have moved to hybrid apps your gmail twitter are hybrid apps because now they require the access of your camera also to uh, because gmail has the video calling facility under hangouts twitter you need to post a tweet you need to add a photo you need to add some voice note so these are different types of applications under uh, the mobile applications so so far what all we have discussed i just want to give you a brief overview before going for further so that we can make sure we understand everything so let's go through it one by one number one we have different stages to develop an application we have different stages to develop a software why are we studying those stages so that everyone in the industry every company follows a structured process this structured process have been developed after years and years of r and d this is not a one day job it's an years and year of r and d research and development 
after that these stages have been decided okay these are efficient stages these stages are needed so that your software can uh, be free of bugs it can be free of errors it can be free of ambiguities before pro uh, providing that software to the client and if you are following the structured process what's the uh, benefit of it our software is high quality software the cost required to build that software is low and the time that we require to build that software is very very short in minimum time we are producing high quality low cost software following a structured process that's the agenda behind for uh, starting these stages next what is a software there are different uh, over uh, different points of view and all of them are linked together now we we'll link this one by one just see set of instructions or programs used to operate computers they are designed to perform a specific task a very narrowed down specific task i would say narrowed down like your camera is designed to perform a very specific function it cannot perform every function so they are opposite of hardware hardware is something physical device something that you can touch software is something virtual and software controls integrates and manages hardware components of a computer system for instance uh, you have a printer let's say and uh, this is a printer and your software can provide it many commands what to print how would it be a colored black and white then how many copies how many copies you want it to be print nowadays even ai has been incorporated into softwares which can uh, which can make sure you can schedule a print for instance you want a print to happen at 10 am tomorrow that has been made possible that at 10 am tomorrow a print would be generated from your computer so that is happening through softwares only your hardware cannot uh, perform that task independently on its own right it needs some uh, some i would say orders from somewhere so that it can follow those orders who is giving that order software is giving that order so they are multi platform you can run a software on desktop on your mobile nowadays your smart tvs are there smart televisions are there which have inbuilt softwares like your hotstar disney hotstar is inbuilt software in them you it comes with prime amazon prime and so on tvs have been provided with entertainment softwares preloaded to make it easier for the user then software touches every sector health your fitness your uh, energy sector military sector uh, like military services are using drone these days how are they how are they making a hardware fly in air it's just because of some software they are controlling the speed they are uh, clicking pictures with just a click of button two hardware components are able to communicate with each other with the help of software so software acts as an intermediate it's an intermediate between two components of hardware i'm i'm pressing enter over here and a printout comes out of my computer who communicated through my laptop to my computer there was a printing software so that is what software is and it is uh, created by computer programs we usually call them coders next characteristics of good software so three uh, major characteristics operational transitional and maintenance operational deals with exterior quality transitional deals with when you are moving from one platform to other and maintenance deals with the interior quality so under operation we usually take care of the client's perspective client's perspective it should be able uh, client and other developers perspective i would say so uh, it should be uh, uh, meet the client's needs usable very friendly should perform the specific function should save time should save space it should be reliable at the time of execution it should not fail it should may keep the client's data safe and it should be safe from the malicious software as well and this is when we are moving from one software to the other 
So usability comes that my software is able to provide all the required data to new device that is called usability. Portability means that if my software was performing one function in my older device, that software is able to perform the same function in new device. The functionality doesn't get hindered. And transferability means when I'm transferring from the lower, uh, the older, te older technological device, the technology in the device in which the technology was of older standards to a new highly technical device, my software is able to incorporate with the new technologies added. So if my earlier software was catering needs of 10 clients, uh, storing the addresses of 10 clients, and I moved to a highly advanced system, and my software now has to deal with 100 clients, my software should be able to update itself, should be able, should have that ability to expand. And then comes maintenance. If one developer is able to maintain it after we leave the software, then I would say it is a maintainable software. If we have to write very less tests to deal with the software, it's a testable. Flexibility to the new technologies, extensibility and scalability are one and the same thing, which we're covering over transition also. And modularity, very important. If your software is performing, suppose 10 functions, then you can, you should be able to break your software into 10 different parts and each part can be tested separately. That is called modular software. When your software can be divided into separate chunks, small chunks, and each chunk can be tested separately, that is modularity. Next, basic differences, hardware, physical components, software, instructions. Hardware, tangible in nature, we can touch, we can see. Software, we cannot touch. Hardware, four major categories, input, output, processing, and storage. Software, two major categories, so system software, application software. Hardware immune to computer viruses. Computer viruses does not affect your screen. It does not affect your laptop. Uh, it does not affect your keyboard. It does not affect your mouse. Softwares are affected by viruses. Viruses are designed to affect softwares. Failure in hardware can occur to voltage issues, cabling issues, or setup issues. Failure in software can ha happen through bugs, spywares, malwares, and malicious softwares. Hardware cannot be updated virtually. The older technology, the older hardware needs to be replaced. Software can be updated online. If my hardware gets broken, I have to uh, replace it with a new one. Software, I can uh, get the new files from the internet, from the network, and my software would be upgraded. So uh, you might have seen, you must have received on your mobile phones, system upgrade needed. You have received a system upgrade. You click on it. It says, okay, do not switch off your phone. Do not uh, disconnect it. It would take 20 to 25 minutes to upgrade the software. Your mobile operating system gets up upgraded from older version to newer version. So that is happening virtually. You're not adding something uh, into the device. Then hardware, if you're transferring from one place to the other, it needs to be transferred physically. You cannot send it over internet. Software can be transferred over internet. For instance, you can send it through your Google Drive or you can share it through other softwares and may, many other platforms are there. Examples, monitor, keyboard, mouse, CPU, hard disk, and so on. Software examples, MS Word, Windows operating system, Google Chrome. So remember, browser is a software. So remember that browser is a software. Operating system is a software. So we would understand this when we would once we would cover the types of software in next lecture. In next lecture, there are two major things, types and different stages, stages of development. So these are two broad topics, very, very important topics in the next lecture we would be covering regarding software. So what is an application? This is very important for us because we would be moving towards web pages or applications as per our interest once we have learned full stack uh, technologies. So apps are a part of software, but not, not all software is, is an application. Three types, or sorry, desktop apps, which has your word uh, processors, your operating systems, web browser, media players, gaming softwares, and so on. Mobile applications, if we come, there are three major types, native, web, and hybrid. 
native platform specific and these application can access the components the components of your device camera mic speakerphone etc web applications are actual websites running in the server which are displayed on your screen as per the resolution they do not access the components of your device hybrid apps are the combination of web app and a native app they can access the device components whereas actual website is running on the server so if we see how are they structured a native container is built within which an app a web app is running this web app is composed of which particular technologies html css javascript whereas a native app is platform specific technology so there are different uh, with respect to each language there are different uh, extensions of that language which which can help you build the native application one of them is react native so all those developers who wish to move towards mobile applications they learn react native now uh, same thing platform specific and examples some of our angry birds and web apps uh, are actual web pages which are running on mobile devices and nowadays everyone is moving towards hybrid apps because they need functionality of both native and web app so these were the topics that we discussed today let's uh, take some questions if you have any questions any doubts anything you did not get uh, in today's lectures just put it in chat so we have not received any questions yet so i assume that we understood what we discussed today because these were the basics and we need to understand these basics before before moving to the development life cycle of these uh, applications perfect yeah very clear um mm -hmm. thank you so much talash so do we have anything uh, anything you want to say uh nothing um we will wrap it up here and uh, i will upload the uh, recordings for the last three days uh, uh in a while and um, that's it uh, see you all on monday uh, monday uh, we will have our loss introductory uh, session on the a uh, software development cycle and uh, any other uh, theoretical discussions that uh, might need to be completed and on uh, tuesday uh, we will start our uh, actual coding stuff with uh, setting our uh, tools and technologies that are needed perfect ash thank you everyone for joining uh, today see you on monday same time have a nice day